Hey guys, it's Russell back and on today's video I'm going to go over with you and explain the two oil analysis reports that I received back from the labs. If you remember in our Honda Accord second oil change that we did, I showed you how to do the oil, the filter, we cut open the oil filter and I took a sample of oil to send off to Blackstone Labs and oil analyzers. This report that we're looking at here is from Blackstone Laboratories. I'm going to just go over very briefly with you. It's got your personal information and account information here. In this box right here, it's got a summary, if you will, of the actual analysis that they did and also looking back at over some of the uh, previous analysis if you'd had that done. One thing that Blackstone Laboratory does very good is that they have a nice customized uh, synopsis here that is very applicable to this specific uh, report. Looking over the bottom portion of the report, I've had two oil changes on the Honda. The very first oil change was at 8,350 miles. The second oil change had 8,500 miles on it. That was at 16,861 16, miles. This column over here is the universal averages. That is the, for that engine, it's what the averages should be around of a healthy engine. What we want to do is when you're looking at an oil analysis report such as this one, you want to look at some of the flagged items. Now we see we've got aluminum that's flagged, uh, iron, copper, and silicone here. But what you want to do is when you look at these, you want to look at the trends. Okay, this change right here was the factory Honda oil fill. The oil over here was what I had changed it with. It had Amsoil, the OW30. And we see that the aluminum is still higher than what it really should be but that's to be expected with an engine that's barely out of break-in and that's still new. So what we're looking for is the trends. We're going down. We went from 21, 29 to 21. That's good. As long as these figures are starting to go down we'll see in subsequent oil changes as we follow the life of this engine that these will trend downward and they could even be lower than the universal averages probably maybe in a couple of years. The iron, um, that is also trending down. It went from 33 down to 17. Copper, 18 to 4. A lot of people may not understand where some of these wear metals come from. Aluminum usually comes from pistons. The iron, you can get that from piston rings. So as long as these numbers are going down, we're in good shape. Copper, there's a lot of copper in some of the gaskets that they use in the modern engines. So as that leaches out into the oil, um, that number will be high. But as, as we're seeing, it's continuing to come down. These right here, some of these uh, down here, like phosphorus and zinc and barium and all that, those are additives in the different oils. But what is interesting to note is the calcium. The calcium is 1,673 in the factory fill, but you see it's very, it's about 1,200 higher in the, the Amsoil, and that's just an additive. Now here's something that's very interesting, silicon. This is used in gasket materials, but in an engine that's new, it is, if you remember that when they make or they pour engine blocks, they use sand castings uh, in the molds. So you're going to have sand particles that are going to take a while to work their way out of the passages in the engine and they're going to show up as silicone in the oil analysis. Now the other way that you can get silicone in your engine is through a dirty air filter or PCV valve that's not operating properly. These will also let silicone in there. So it's a good idea to at least once a year do an oil analysis on every engine. And it's, and it's more for engine internal health than it is 
to really see how much oil life you have left, which is also a good benefit. But I want to be able to see trends. If I see that I have aluminum that is not going down or it's going up, I may need to look and, and research what components would cause the aluminum to be high in the oil. If we look at the bottom of the report, there's some good information down here. We've got viscosity, which was, uh, I believe that was flagged along with fuel or um, flashpoint. Now, just keep, keep in mind that a lot of engines, you're gonna see fuel percentage at zero or almost zero. In a direct, direct injected engine, such as in a Honda, you are always gonna have a little bit higher fuel percentage in there. That's just the nature of the, of the beast. Um, the most important number down here is TBN, that's total base number. That's, think of that as antioxidant level that's left in the oil. If we look at the Honda factory oil, it only had 2.1 left, which is pretty good after almost 8,500 miles. And, but look at this in the Amsoil, it had twice as much left, which means this oil could have gone a lot further than it did. This right here, what you need to do is you need to look at the other numbers also in, as a whole, not just, not just one single number, but if you're having a TBN that's around, you know, four or five, and all these other numbers, some of the other numbers are high, then you're probably still in good shape because this oil still has a lot of life in it. It still has a lot of potential to neutralize the acids and the contaminants that are in the oil. So just remember to think about that as antioxidant for your oil. So this is a nice strong report. I'm gonna let you guys look at the, uh, the synopsis here. But myself, I was, I was pleased to see everything that's starting to come down and they even validated that. So what I'm gonna do next is show you what the oil analyzers report looks like. All right, here's the report from oil analyzers. Very similar to Blackstone. It's got the information that you provided to them. And we will just point down a little bit. Here is the comments area. This is one area where I definitely like the Blackstone report better. The comments are not as generic as the oil analyzers. Um, the technician that typed the comments there really kind of analyzed and took into account what was going on. Whereas here in the oil analyzers, it seems like this, this is more of a maybe uh, just bank of comments that they put in there. Still, it's got good information, but uh, I like the Blackstone synopsis better. If we look here, it flags some of the various uh, contaminants or wear metals that are found. Aluminum is at 21. If you remember, the aluminum was also 21 on our sample from Blackstone. Uh, they flagged boron and not looking, I don't think this was flagged on, um, don't think it was flagged on the Blackstone. But most of these, like the iron was at 17 and the iron on this one was also at 17. So both of these reports pretty much agree with each other, which kind of validates both of them. The only thing that's out of range that really don't agree is the fuel dilution. This one it's saying it's greater than 5%, whereas it was 1.5 on the Blackstone. I'm not worried about this because if we look at the base number, you can see that it's 4.76, it was four on the Blackstone. And our oxidation is fine, our nitration is fine. So again, looking at all these as a whole, I'm not worried about this because the base number here is still really, really strong. So overall, I think that the um, oil analysis on the Honda is very good. As we will follow this engine throughout the um, coming oil changes, we'll see that these numbers will start dropping. One thing that I do want to point out is that you may ask why there's only one um, 
value here. For whatever reason, they didn't merge my first and second report. If it had been merged, you would have seen another uh, field here, which would have had my first oil analysis on there, but that's fine. I'm going to get them to correct that. So I hope this has been helpful. If you've never done an oil analysis, I would highly suggest that you give it a try and um, keep these records with your car so you can potentially head off any problems that may be uh, starting to occur before you would even know that they were um, visible or uh, that you could tell. So guys, I will see you on the next video.